All right, so this virtual draft is going to mess up the big day for these NFL draftees. But can you imagine the Olympians? They've trained for years. Now they've got to wait another 9, 10 months at least. I talked to a local Olympian about his Olympic experience. He won the silver medal in 1988, but he has the heart of gold and the heart of a champion. Here's six-time world champion Michael Carbajal. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Michael Carbajal's 9th Street Gym. This is is the social distancing championship of the world. Introducing first out of the red corner with 17 years of experience in the Valley of the Sun, a 10 time Emmy nominee and four time Emmy award winner representing Fox 10, the challenger and reporter, Rockin' Richard Sines. And introducing his opponent out of the blue corner, representing Michael Carvajal's 9th Street Gym. He was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame, presenting the 1988 silver medalist and six-time world champion, Manito de Piedra, Michael Carvajal. And now referee Wes Melton for instructions. Okay, fighters, come to the middle of the ring. Make sure you're six feet apart. I want you to have a good, clean fight. Make sure you wash your hands. Keep yourself six feet apart and do not touch gloves. Time! Michael, first of all, thanks for meeting me in the ring and for this interview, I appreciate it. I want to talk about your Olympic memories. Uh, First of all, that team, I mean, that was a star-studded team yourself. Roy Jones Jr., Ray Mercer, Riddick Bowe. I mean, a lot of world champions, future world champions in that class. Yes, there was. Um, I still say we're the greatest team out of all of us. Out of the 76 team is the other one that, that said, you know, they're, they're, which they were a great team, but we had more um, medalists and more world champions. What was it like for you to not only represent Arizona, but your entire country. It was unbelievable because, you know, I, I, first thing I, when I wanted to fight, it was all about professional fighting. I wanted to be, become a professional champion. And then the Olympics came up. I just, I just ended up beating everybody. And I said, <laughs> oh, I'm going to Olympics then. <laughs> then I got excited, you know, from the Pan Am Games and all that before that. So I got a little taste of it. So it was great. What went through your mind? What memories were, were stirred up when you found out that this year's Olympics was being delayed? Oh, I felt bad. I felt bad for the athletes who were training. Said, oh, man. I mean, it's really, really terrible when you're training so hard and you know that, that you're near it and then it gets canceled. But you know what? It's really for the better of everybody and, and they got to realize you know, we just wait till next year. You're still going. You, you mentioned the gold. You were in the gold medal match. You, I think you won that fight. Just take us through that controversy and the disappointment which I thought you handled with such class. Yes, I, you know, I was happy, Richard. I was happy that I made it to the finals. You know, I, I, I always had a confidence in everything, but once you're there, you're like, whoa, I'm in the finals and I'm <laughs> going for this gold. And you know, a lot of people said I got robbed, but just like I did, I raised my, my shoulders up and said, what can I do? I'm still happy though. And it's obvious that this was a special moment in your life, deservedly so, right? Respectfully so. Tell us about what you got here. This is your actual suitcase from when you went to the Olympics in 1988. Let's open it up and, and see what you got in there, Mike. <laughs> it's funny because I still have the tags on it. I, I never took them off. I, I just left it alone. Wow. I have so my that's the tag for when you flew from here to South Korea. Yeah. Wow. And then you got the Olympic team. Wow, that's, that's one star-studded team, man. A lot of <laughs> world champions, future yeah. world champions in that class yeah. right there. That, it's unbelievable. And here's a certificate. And this, I mean, this thing. I was so excited when I came back because you know why? You you couldn't. This whole neighborhood, full of cars, full of people, 
After I came back, I was like, damn, what did I do here? <laughs> I was like, whoa, it wow. was crazy. Wow. And so then, they were all see, I just left that stuff at, at the house and that was it. And you said, this is your jacket? This is your Olympic this jacket? This is my Olympic jacket, yeah. And, and you're getting rid of this. Why are you giving it away? I want to know. Ah, I tried. I tried. I'm I tried saying, hey, Laura, did you say something I didn't know? But. I gave it a shot. I gave it a shot. You know, you're a Hall of Famer. You're in the International Boxing Hall of Fame, the Las Vegas Boxing Hall of Fame, the Arizona Sports Hall of Fame. Where does this Olympic medal, this Olympic experience, this Olympic achievement rank in all your achievements? Well, you know what? I wouldn't have to... Man, first world championship and the Olympics, that's the best. I mean, it's, it's hard to explain for me because ever since I was a little kid, I didn't think about the Olympics. I wanted to be a world champion, professional world champion. So that both of those rate right there, but when I went to Olympics, see, see how I'm arguing, I'm just <laughs> arguing between them, but let's just say this, I'm proud for both of them.